Hello everyone, welcome to the Watch Complications channel. I'm Brian. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you've been around for a while watching some of my videos, I really hope you enjoyed the most recent uh, set of videos that I posted on making custom watch dials. That GMT project was a lot of fun. Delivered the project to the customer a couple weeks ago. Extremely pleased and I can't wait to get more pictures and information posted on my blog, watchcomplications.com about that. That's coming soon. I just got to finish editing it. But in this video, I'm going to give you a brief review of a new watch I got via Kickstarter. My last Kickstarter watch was a Zarek Atlas Sphere, and it was, it was okay. I actually, as I mentioned in my review video for that, that you could also find in the channel, I wasn't extremely happy with it, and so I actually moved it along. I did sell it, got most of my money back, but it got a good review out of it. Um, there was a few things I didn't like about it in terms of the of the quality, and you know, Zarek does a lot of more gimmicky almost sorts of watches. They've got some weird designs and stuff, but I really didn't like it that much, so I sold it. But I've got another Kickstarter watch to show you that I'm actually really happy with. So first of all, I backed this company uh, this project on Kickstarter back in January. It's May, so the watch has already arrived, so great timeline. It was only $99, which is a great price point for just trying something out, trying something different. It is a watch that's manufactured by this sort of Chinese manufacturing group, this large umbrella. They have uh, Kickstarters all the time. They're what I would call sort of a serial Kickstarter. The best I can make of the company or group name is Linvino but they put a different logo on almost every different watch that they, they make. So they're trying to cheaply manufacture as many watches as possible and different brands and things like that. And, and you know, that is what it is, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad watch, depending on what you're looking for, because it does have some good components that comprise the watch. I'm happy with it. So the brand name on this particular watch is Laville, and it's a regulator style watch. It's got a Seiko movement and it's got some other great things about it. A couple cons, but I'm gonna talk about all those details as I walk you through the up-close view of this latest addition to my collection via Kickstarter. So I do have the watch on the day. It arrived last week. I've been wearing it a few days to kind of get a good feel for it. So here is a, a quick peek at the watch we're going to look at up close. It is a regulator style, as you can see. It's got a solid case back, and I've got it on a navy strap. Came on a light brown. I thought I would like it better on the brown, but turns out I think the navy looks better. If it looks black in the pictures in the video, um, it's just because it's a really dark navy, but it is, it is blue. And let's talk more about this up close. So with Kickstarter watches, you kind of never know what you're gonna get in terms of the packaging usually, but this is pretty good. So it came in, in a, this box, uh, well packaged, bubble wrap around the outer watch box. There's no branding or anything on it. It's a cardboard sleeve around it. So we take that sleeve off and you've got the box. So Laville. It's got just a lid on it. Pops off like so. And then inside of here um, is cushion. It's a nice, you know, fake leather cushion. So inside of here you've got the QR code to get the e-manual and whatnot. Up here you've got the email address, which I'm covering, um, date of purchase, and two-year warranty, which is not bad for a Kickstarter watch and most uh, you know watches. The fact that it comes with a two-year warranty is pretty nice. Um, so if anything was to particularly go wrong, um, you could always have you know a little bit of recourse there. But Pretty, you know, interesting little box. It's okay, you know, for 400 bucks, not bad actually. Um, I've gotten a lot worse for the same money. So this had, this is a little bit bigger because they actually had, you know, both straps. So they had, you know, this spare strap on, on one side and then the actual watch on the other. So it fit, you know, both of those things nice and well, but it, it wasn't, you know, all scrunched up in a really cheap, cheap box. So that was kind of nice, and then the watch was all wrapped up in sort of your standard plastic. But that's what the packaging looked like for this for this particular watch. Okay, so let's talk some of the finer details of this watch. It came with the two straps. This is the one that was on the watch. 
which is a, a light brown strap. You can see it's got quick release pins. It's you know an okay quality. Could be better. We'll see how long it lasts, like any sort of strap, and how well it holds up. But you know it's okay. It's it's maybe not the best quality leather, but I think it's it's fine for this particular price range. I thought I would like it on this light brown a little bit more, but I actually like it on the navy, like I said earlier, sort of a little bit better. And the reason for that is, is because I think it brings out the color of the dial a little bit more. Because this is a, a brown and then the dial is sort of a champagne color, then the darker strap just makes that color a little bit more pronounced. And so it's not, you know, brown fighting another sort of shade of brown. So I do like the, the navy strap. Again, if it looks a little bit darker than that, uh, or looks black, it's not. Again, I've got some pictures that'll be in the blog post to kind of try to detail that difference uh, between uh, the blue and a black strap and also uh, how the champagne dial is extremely different than a regular white dial, you know, on a black dial. So I've got some pictures about that on, on the blog post. Now, there were several different options for the dial on this watch. This is the champagne color. There was also a white, there was a black. So there were there were a few color options and I thought this just looked more you know, classic, more traditional, uh, particularly for a, a vi more vintage regulator sort of look. So one of the things I really want to point out first is with the second hand movement, you can see that it's not your typical low end quartz movement where it's got just a single jump uh, from second to second. It's got a little bit more of a sweeping motion than that, not quite what you would have uh, obviously with a mechanical movement, but at least it has multiple steps between the seconds, which gives it more, again, of that sort of more vintage or mechanical look to it, even though it is a quartz movement. It is a Japanese movement. It's a Seiko VH83A. That's the that's the exact movement that's in this. So it is battery powered. And so it'll last about two years. It is only gonna gain or lose maybe 15 seconds a month. So it's a nice movement. And again, one of the reasons I like it is because it is a nice movement and that I can, of course, set this and you know sort of forget about it in terms of the time setting. And it's still got this sort of vintage look to it though. And particularly what I really like, one of the big pros for this is that it still has sort of that almost sweeping motion to the seconds hand. Now, of course, a regulator watch, one of the key features, the design features about it is that all of the different hands are separate from each other. So I like the second hand, it's blue. You see it's got this counterbalance on the end. It's just a great looking seconds hand and I like the motion of it. The minutes is indicated by this red disc, this right here. This is probably one of the coolest features. I think it's one of the most unique things about this watch. It's not something you would see very often. This actually has a clear disc that this red circle is printed on. And so there's a clear disc sitting between the crystal and the dial, but it still looks nice and clear. So it's an extremely clean, clear, it's transparent. You can't even tell it's there unless you're looking under magnification. Uh, around the edges, you can see where it ends. There's basically a spinning clear disc in here that has this circle printed on it and it's just going around, following the minutes. And then when the, the circle gets over one of the numbers, um, it's in the circle. It's also got a little pointer on the end of it. You'll see it again closer in the pictures on, on the website, but you can see there's a little arrow on the end of it. Again, so that whenever you're not on a number or the circle isn't around a number exactly, you can still see uh, where that is pointing to. So that's a cool way to do the minutes on this particular regulator design. So we got the seconds in the middle. We've got the minutes are on this clear disc. You can kind of see, you can see this line around the edge. Let me actually get a uh, get a little screwdriver here. You can see there's this line right here. There's actually a circle that's printed here, but that is also where the disc ends, this clear disc. 
So if you're looking at it from most angles, uh, here you can see that there's a printed line under there, but it's also where the disc ends. And of course that's pretty tight tolerances there and making it look like that this line is visible all the time, but it's also where that plastic disc ends. Just a cool effect. Um, I think it's really great. So you can see it's got this vintage feel to it with a champagne dial, got a blue seconds hand with the, the counterbalance. We've got a, a circle that's going around to tell our minutes. And then we have the hours are here in this left sub dial that's between six and uh, eight. So this is our hour. So it's a full 24 hour hand. You can see that it is red also and just goes around once every 24 hours. Specifically, it is exactly 3.30, so it's right there evenly between the 16 and the 15. So that's my hours in a day. Uh, we have the seconds, minutes, hours, and then we have the retrograde up here for the day of the week, uh, Monday through Sunday. And retrograde just meaning that once this gets to the end, it will just snap back to the beginning. And so we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on and so forth. And Sunday is down here. Once it goes back to Monday, this hand just snaps back to the M for Monday. So that's the day of the week. And then we have the day of the month. So today is the 14th of May, to be specific, but this is to the 14th and again when this gets up to the 24 hours the way that these will flip uh, overnight is when this hits 24 the date will flip to the next day and then two hours later at 2 in the morning this would flip to the next day of the week and that's pretty typical of most movements that if you have multiple complications like that they'll flip sort of on the hour in succession, depending on how many complications there are. So that's pretty typical. Okay, so that's that's the hands. And again, the fact that it's a regulator, all these operations are separate from each other. There's no two hands on the same dial. Um, everything is on its own unique track, and it's just a cool, unique look. And this one has seconds, minutes, hours, day of the week, and day of the month. So all the main things you would typically want or need to know, quickly viewable independently of each other. So let's talk some of the other sort of general details about the watch. That's that's all about the hands and the dial. Um, you can see the crown is at four o'clock, which is a little bit more typical of a, of a dress style watch that you would see from time to time. Also some divers, you know, you want to keep that crown out of the way, but the crown is at four o'clock, which I like. And this case is 316L stainless steel, so it's a good quality case. It's it's good, strong, um, high quality stainless steel. The buckle also, which has the brand on it, which is polished. This kind of gives you a view of the profile of the case. You can see the lugs there are nicely curved, wraps around the wrist really well. Not too tall, standard height. I will show you what those measurements look like here in a second. The crystal is sapphire. So this is a $100 watch. I think it's got a great design, great dial. And it's got, again, that case is a, is a decent case. It's made of high quality grade steel and it's got a sapphire crystal. And I did test the crystal. I have a device that will tell me if it's mineral crystal or sapphire crystal. So it is, I did, I did whenever I get something manufactured um, or lower cost uh, from overseas and I want to ensure that it is truly sapphire and not some other form of crystal, I, I test it. I test all my crystals just to see, make sure they're not lying to me. Maybe that's just me. But let's take a quick look at, at the dimensions of this just to verify for you what they are. So here we have the diameter. It is 42 millimeter, which is, for me, um, a 
pretty decent size. My favorite is 40 to 42, so it's right in the sweet spot for me. So it's 42 millimeter in diameter. And let's look at the height real quick. 9.6, so it's relatively thin. Of course, quartz is gonna be a little bit thinner than mechanical watches usually, depending on, on the price range you're in. So this has got sort of a great vintage dress watch feel to it, being a, a regulator look. It's got the 42 millimeter diameter, so it's a little bit bigger than a lot of dress watches in terms of the diameter, but it's under 10 millimeters in height, having that crown at four, you know, a nice slim profile. I think it's a really excellent looking watch, to be honest. Uh, for a hundred bucks, absolutely, this has got, and some of the things that, you know, really sell it to me, being only $100 is that it does have the high quality steel case. It's got a sapphire crystal. So what are the cons of this watch that I've, I've you know, come across so far? Well, one is the quality of the, or the detail, I guess, in the subdial hands. I love the second hand, the blue. I think it's a great choice. Uh, the red here on the hours it's a little bit darker than the red printed here on the minute circle if these two reds had been a little bit closer in color they are just a shade different with the with the hand being a little bit darker than the circle you can kind of see it. now on glance you might not notice it as much or in certain lights but I wish that those colors were matched I also wish that the quality of these subdial hands and they're just simple subdial hands and they're really going for a minimalist look here and and so I'm sure that's part of the design and that's fine uh, these hands are gray silver they're low end you know regular old subdial hands which again you know you get what you pay for so they're okay they're fine they look okay they do their job uh, but like this one could be just a hair shorter so that the hand doesn't necessarily interfere with the actual day. So it's just a little bit too long. And on this side, I wish the hand was just a little bit longer so that it's a little bit closer to the day of the month. So if there was one thing I would want to quickly change about this watch, it would be the subdial hands. And what's great is, when I go about replacing this battery the first time, I can always take it apart and I could change those hands if I wanted to, to something that is uh, a little bit more of what I might like. But, you know, it, it still looks fine. But these are just regular old silver hands. And this one's a, a, a sort of a maroon color. This is more of a red red. And then we've got the blue hand. So the hand quality for the sub dials is something I would change. One other thing um, in terms of, of the watch overall is that whenever I uh, wanted to switch from the strap that was on it, this is the strap that was on it, the brown one, and I wanted to move to the navy strap, is there's only one buckle. So they sent another strap, but the secondary strap did not have a buckle on it. So even though these were quick release, you know, quickly, you know, take the brown strap off and put the navy strap on, I did have to change the buckle. I did have to move the buckle from the brown to the blue. And so again, again, it's not quick release. You don't have, you have to have a, you know, a tool to do that. And so, you know, yeah, I couldn't quickly change it. It takes just a few seconds for me to change it, but they really skimped in that they didn't include another buckle on the second strap. I think they only give you one. That was my biggest con with the strap. Again, in terms of the quality, it's kind of what you would expect, um, but, and it's an okay strap. I like it, it's comfortable, but I wish they had, I don't know why they didn't include a second buckle with a strap, but they didn't. So those are the two the two main cons, at least in the time that I've, I've interacted with the watch and dealt with it is buckle on the strap and the subdial hands for the uh, watch. All right, so for the setting of this watch, it's got three positions, position zero all the way in. It just spins, pull out to one click, position one, 
it's a quick set for the day of the month and it, you can just quickly rotate the day of the month, pull out all the way to position two, and then you're setting the uh, minutes, hours, and day of the week simultaneously. Okay, so these three are connected whenever you set them, minutes, hours, and day of the week. So I'm not gonna wanna do this again, but I wanna show you this just because it kinda looks cool. Well, I'll wait till the, the minute hand comes back around and then I'll stop it because it does have a hacking seconds hand. So when you pull out to position two, the second hand does stop. Okay, so this is about to 60. And so I stop it there at 60. And then what I can turn here is I can turn the minute now. And this will turn the hour hand. Notice the hour hand is also turning as I move this. So the hour hand is moving, you can see. And if I keep turning it when it gets to 24 hours at 2 a.m., this will flip to the next day. But I think this, I think this is cool. Uh, the fact that this is on a clear disc and the minute turns that way. I just wanted to show you that on the video so you get a good idea of, of what that looks like. I think it's pretty cool. All right, so I started it back up again. I didn't want to reset. So it does take a little bit of time that if you've got to you know, go through a whole week to set the day of the week, it can take a long time because your only way to set this thing is by the minutes. And so it keeps going around and around and around until you get to the hours that you want and the day of the week you want. So, but once it's set, you're good to go. Um, I wish there was an independent setting for the retrograde up here, but there's not. Now, two other things I want to show you about this dial, and I can show you from this angle probably with the light. The days of the week here are sort of a, a darker gray printing, but then there are other parts of the dial that are like black. So like the logo, the numerals for the minute track are black, but the days of the week are a dark gray. The hash marks here on the month subdial is gray. See that? You can kind of tell the difference there. Like, think, look at the numeral for the minute track here, 25, and the numeral here for the 13th day of the month. That's a gray. This is black. The dots here for the minutes, these are gray. So there's a combination of this gray collar in printing and the black in places. So that's one you know, interesting thing. Uh, throw some contrast in there. It's subtle, but it actually kind of gives it an interesting effect. I love this interaction here of the 8th and the 17th. Of course, so they're, uh, they're printing every four days here and printing every uh, four hours here as well. So it's just kind of an interesting, interesting look for this regulator style watch. I, I, I really do like it. Now again, you can kind of tell, there is this line that's printed here. The gray uh, circle is printed here on the edge. And you can also see, kind of see, that's where that disc ends. You can kind of tell. It's right there. It's it's so subtle though. It's, it's, it's really well done. The other thing I was gonna say about the dial is, these are actually recessed. So these two sub dials, you can see that there's this sort of beveled edge around these and that is because they are actually recessed in the dial face so it's not yellow sometimes it kind of has like a yellow tint to it but it's just that it's that champagne color and it's angled down so that is a recess in in the dial face if I can show you here you can kind of see again it's very subtle you can kind of see it there in certain light, you can see, you can see right there is the end of the disc, which perfectly aligns with that printed circle there. There's the little arrow on the end of the minute circle, which is nice. I really love this blue hand and the counter counterweight counterbalance on it. It's really cool. Um, just an excellent looking watch, to be honest. I have a low cost watches series, and that's where I get you know things that are usually in the, like the $20 to $50 range. And I've got plenty of videos 
um, on the channel that are in that series and, and blog posts and things. And I'm going to continue to do that. It's got things like, you know, the Casios and the Timex and um, other stuff like that. Cheap stuff I get off of Amazon. This at $100, this is certainly a cut above those. And just a, an excellently done design. I'm, I'm happy with it. There's nothing gimmicky about this. It's got some real quality things about it. I do like the strap. I love this navy collar that they've done. It matches the hand pretty closely. I think the vintage look to this champagne collar is, is great. I love this unique touch with the minute uh, disc. And I, I think it's just a really good regulator watch. And this is currently the only regulator that I've got in my collection. And I think the last important thing I'll just remind you about is this this movement of of the second hand which has you know a characteristic of this particular Seiko movement that's in it so if you are going to go quartz as opposed to mechanical this is the way to go you know I do like certain quartz watches I've got a few in the collection that I wear semi-regularly but what drives me nuts the most about quartz watches is just that solid tick from one second to the next. I, I'm used to this wearing, you know, hand wound and mechanical watches and having a nice smoother sweeping seconds motion. And this is a quartz watch that gets you a little bit closer to that. And I think it's, I think it's just a great selection in terms of the movement. Well, that's the up close look at this. I guess, let me um, show you a little bit more. You can see here, uh, the crown does have a nice, uh, separation there from the edge of the case you can easily pull it out and set the time and things you can see they've got the brand name so Laville uh, 316 stainless steel you know water resistant Japan movement and so very you know minimal information on the back uh, just a solid case back on that so it's just a snap in push down case back so I wouldn't go swimming or anything with this ever but it's a nice simple design that evokes sort of a classic feel it's got classic tones to it this is such a, a good looking good looking watch and I was thinking that it would not be um, as nice as it is to be honest I wasn't expecting to really like it a lot I was expecting to maybe like it um, but I like it I do all right, well, I hope you enjoyed this up-close look and review of the LaVille Regulator watch. It's one that I'm very happy with, particularly at the price I paid. It's got some good things about it. It's a unique uh, piece in my collection in that it's the only regulator watch that I have currently. And so I'll keep it around and see you know, how much I wear it over the next couple months. I think that it will find quite a bit of time. It looks great. It's got a nice motion to the second hand that I like that's not your typical quartz uh, in terms of, of the ticking and talking but I think this is worth a look if you're after a lower cost regulator style watch in the video information I'll put all the links to like the original Kickstarter campaign page to uh, the the ordering page that well the main website for for the company so I'll put all that in there. I'll also put in a link to my blog post, which will have a lot more pictures and all the text and informational sorts of things uh, about this particular watch. So a more in-depth sort of look at it. So if you want to see more about this particular watch, just check for my for my blog post for it as well on watchcomplications.com. Also, make sure you subscribe to me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. I'm Brian, and thanks for watching.